Hi, this is Joe Bowen, and welcome to learningaboutvisualbasic.net. In this video and the next two videos, we're going to look at how to deploy your .NET program. This first video, we're going to look at using what's called the xcopy method of deployment, which is the easiest way to deploy your program. The second method we'll look at in the second video is what's called the click once method, which is provided by Visual Studio for us to create a fairly professional method of deployment. And the third video, we'll take a look at what's called the Wix toolset and how it is used to create a very sophisticated professional deployment that would include more diverse things that we might need uh, to give our program to someone else. But before we get started, let's have a program to work with and we'll learn how to use the xcopy method of deployment. So my program that I have up is a simple program that I usually give to uh, one of the first projects to students uh, is to create a simple uh, program using some labels and a picture box. And this is it. And I'm going to show you what running on that. So you can see what it looks like when it runs. And you'll see it has the current uh, date and time and a little phrase down below and a fun picture to go with it. And so let's say the student now wants to deploy this program. They need to have a method to do that. And we're going to look at the xcopy method of deployment. First of all, before we get started, let's take a look at the project itself. And I'm going to look specifically at the .NET framework that's part of this project. So I'm going to click on uh, my project in the Solution Explorer. And I'm going to take a look at the target framework. In this case, I chose a lower level, the .NET framework 452 level for this program. Now, this is not necessarily a good idea because I'm giving up some of the newer security features and also memory leaks that might be fixed and some other areas that have been improved by a more current .NET framework. In fact, as I am creating this program, the current level I have on my system is a .NET framework 4.7. So I'm going back pretty far with a 4.5.2, but a 4.5.2 .NET framework will appear on most, not all, but most Windows 7 operating system computers. It will appear on Windows 8, 8.1, and Windows 10 computers. So I'm going to have a pretty good target audience that can run this program without any additional work. Uh, but they have to have at least the .NET Framework 452 that I'm using for this program to run. And if I had chosen to use a more current version of the .NET Framework, we may have to install that framework on their computer as well to make it work. But I'm choosing a 452 for this one. I'm also going to compile it as a release version, not a debug. The debug will give me objects that are either larger or even more objects than I need to deploy this program. We want to have a clean, clean, pristine um, series of objects to work with when we compile it. Now, I've already compiled this, and you'll see uh, as I hit all, uh, show all files on the Solution Explorer, you'll see that I have a folder called bin. And in the bin folder is another folder called release. And that release folder has my objects. In this case, it has only four objects. Now you might be tempted to say, oh, well, all I need to do is grab that vbisfun.exe object and put it on somebody else's computer. And it may work, but not necessarily. There are sometimes other objects that are needed for the program to run. And you can't take just the ex executable object to do that. You need to have every object that's part of the release folder. So how we do that is we go to the release folder after we compile it uh, as a release, we right click on it and we go into open command prompt at that folder level. Now I'm going to go up one level and I'm going to do a, a CD dot dot. Now take me up one level I'm going to do DIR for directory, and you'll see I have both the debug and the release folder, and this release folder is what I want to have. Now, in the older days, we used what was called the xcopy method of deployment, 
and the xcopy uh, method or command required a number of switches in the command line to make certain we got everything uh, copied that we needed for our program to be deployed. Uh, since then, Microsoft has released a more enhanced command called robust copy or robocopy that does the same thing with a lot less effort. And so we're going to use the robocopy uh, command in this case. Now, what I want to do is take everything from the release folder, including the folder itself, and put it either on a CD or a flash drive so I can take it to another computer and deploy it. Now, in this case, we're going to just put it on my desktop to make it easy for this demonstration. So uh, make the changes necessary if you're going to deploy this uh, to a flash drive or to a CD. So I'm going to hit Robo Copy. Then my target, or I should say my source, is the release folder. So I'm keying in the release folder, and my target is going to be, in my case, my desktop. My desktop is on my U drive in the user's folder, uh, folder in Bolin, and it's desktop. And I'm going to create a new folder for it. In this case, it, the project was called VB is Fun. So I'll make the folder the same name. Okay, so we've got RoboCopy, Release, which is the source, and then my target folder that I'm going to create is VB is Fun. In this case, I'm creating it on my desktop. Now, once again, if you were to create this to the flash drive, you go right to the flash drive and copy the folder over. Okay, I'm going to hit it. And there we go, all the files have been copied, and I'm done with the command. Remember, it is RoboCopy uh, that we're using, uh, RoboCopy release, and then our target uh, folder that we're going to go to. Okay, we've got that done. Now, I have that folder on my desktop, and let me go to it real quickly now. And there it is uh, that I've copied over. And I'm going to uh, say that we've now brought it from uh, a, maybe a flash drive or CD, and we've now put it on uh, my target computer or friend's desktop. Um, the desktop might not be the best place to put it, but for this demo, we'll just keep it on the desktop. Now, I'm going to open up that folder by double-clicking on it. And you can see there are my files that I had. And just once again, to show you, I can run this program by double-clicking on it, and it works fine. Now what I want to do is create a desktop shortcut for this to have. So I'm going to go to the executable and I'm going to right click on it. And I'm going to choose in this case to go to send to and I'm going to say desktop create shortcut. And that'll create a shortcut on my desktop. And there it is on that. So I can run this and I can double click and test it out. It works fine. So we now have our shortcut on our desktop. Now I also want to have this in my menu area over here at my start. And to do that, what I do is I come to the uh, Windows key on my keyboard, looks like a little window, and hit the R key at the same time. And that gives me the run prompt. And what I type in is shell colon programs so it's shell colon programs then I hit enter and this will, whoops must have mistyped ah uh, I forgot the s programs on the end there we go and it came up and this is the users uh, particular area of their uh, options where they run programs so I'm going to right click on this uh, shortcut hit copy and then come over here to the folder and paste it in. Now it's in the folder. Now, just to show you, coming over here to the start of my desktop, and you'll see it's up there in my recently added. And also, if I go to the Vs, you'll see that VB is fun is also in my menu, so I can run it right from there. So that's how we do it. Uh, we have to, first of all, compile our program. Once again, remember we have to have the .NET framework that we're going to be using, 
has to match or be higher on our target computer. We want to get just the uh, executable, uh, executable objects and the ones that are in the release folder. So once again, I'm right clicking and going open and command prompt. Then I did a uh, quick CD dot dot to go up one level. Then use robo copy release. And then my target, in this case, it was on my uh, uh, U drive. So I had to use, use colon, users, bullen, lowercase bullen, slash, uh, desktop, slash. And then I gave it the name of the folder I wanted to call it. In this case, I called it VB is fun for my folder. And then I hit the enter key. That created my folder with all the objects in the release folder on my desktop and then I took the uh, folder I put it on my destination uh, uh, computer in this case it might I might have done it through a flash drive or a CD once I put it on the destination computer I opened the folder I right clicked on the executable did a send to desktop shortcut create a desktop shortcut then I copied that desktop shortcut, and then I went down to Windows key R and typed in shell colon programs, and then pasted it into that location and make it part of my menu system. So that's how we do an XCopy deployment. The important thing is that the target computer has to have the same .NET framework or higher. The program itself can't be a very complex program where it needs to register some of the objects in the global catalog. And we also were involved with a lot of manual things that have to be done to make it work. And those are okay to begin with, but we wanna make things a little bit easier to deploy. We may wanna also make it a little bit more professional looking as we do our deployment. And we'll see that happen when we look at the click once method in our next video. But in the meantime, get your hands dirty. Try the xcopy deployment using the robocopy command. And if you don't have the robocopy command, you're probably on an older operating system and you're going to have to look up the switches necessary for xcopy to work. But once you get that, you can copy it over and deploy it in someone else's directory. So take care, get your hands dirty and code, and have fun with VisualBasic.net.